Juliet, A Day in the Life by Deirdre Monologue, part documentary and travelogue, Route 66, Motherload. Weather San Francisco, Boston, Washington, D.C., Manchester, London, Paris, Istanbul, Carmel and Crookhaven in West Cork, all you need is a wallet, purse, backpack or carry-on luggage. What do you put in there? A resume, carefully crafted to include dots, periods, commas and indents, accurate. Then stolen to provide a retirement plan for a spy. Not just any spy, James Bond of course and her four children. This account reminds you to arrive early to work, put your purse in the safe locker and keep a journal. Why not? Another seemingly bizarre question from the reclusive yet daunting Eliza, always working for her children. Why would I need to change my compass direction and rearrange my priorities? I'm perfect. Travel this kit through back roads beaches, airports, buses, and planes, cafes, coffee shops, bakeries, and delis to learn how birth certificates, United States citizen certificates, signatures, and of course passports can be sold for the price of a pint. Time of day, however, can never be bought, although revealing. Never, never, never give up. Meet Dutch, who's really German, Elizabeth, who'd pick your apartment lock before picking your brains. She's perfect, too. Take stock of who, what, when, and where. Not just why and how. That old photograph or greeting card is not just a cheerful reminder. It's the essence of joy and sentimental moments. People, near and dear. The California Redwoods for the first time and the grizzly carved to guard Cedar Lodge, who ultimately became a killer. The airport boarding passes, who would put me in seat 17E? That's Ian Fleming's mot d'emploi or code name, if you will, as the world's most famous spy. Or is he? Meet the Bond girl who learned the true meaning of die another day. The one who learns the importance of which of these is not like the other. It was never me, dear. A green sweater and black ski pants worn to Queen's Ice Skating Rink London only years later to show up at the checkout in Safeway store number 759, 3.18 p.m or the director, 5.13 p.m., carrying two Molly's grocery brown bags. The American woman who wore the Burlington coat with distinction on yet another autumn day, Kensington, London, who appears years later as another mom with blonde page hairstyle at my son's elementary school in San Francisco. The tastefully designed linen dress purchased down the keys near Anne Frank's house and worn to a parents' night at my son's high school. Less than one year later, it became a lampshade at Ikea. Or the California wine merchant who gave this 17-year-old Juliet a ride home from St. Patrick's, May 15, 1984, approximately 5.29 p.m., 36 years later to reappear roadside by the garbage bin at 7.29 p.m. Saturday night as an older GQ as his Juliet was on her way to Lowe's. The birthday, the dress, the ring, and do you know Stedman? Learn French, take vitamins, learn to cook, 
and swim at least 50 laps in the pool before work. Another voyage on the Mayflower for Juliet. Roses are red, violets are blue, or perhaps rose nine and ten for the fellow who wants your name and face at a San Jose Sharks game. Only to reappear many years where, later wearing Betsy. We had so much fun in Wales. I'm so grateful, Mr. Dickens. Stick to the facts. And so I have. A ground floor bedroom in the French chateau, Le Chateau Sandel, which I never listed on my resume. Or apartment number two, another bus stop on Sam Trams 295 through San Mateo in California. No Uncle Sam here. Oh, Emma dearest, one is always just one mile from an oil refinery and the huge tankers that return yet again through the Mediterranean, Suez Canal and Gulf of Aden. Always Gulf oil, always. This is what your grandmother bought you, Shannon. Will it be Stephen Seagal at dawn, Coptorn Tower, London, or take him on to the greenhouse for those beautiful tomatoes in Woodside? Perhaps Green's Ormond movie theater in Middleton? Concourse d'Elegance through the English countryside. TGV speeding through France to beautiful Aix. An evening in saint jean le pin Sitting under the pillars of the Fame Museum while Scott played those American classics outside the Uffizi. Another gorgeous night in Florence. Sailing from Rhodes to Turkey. Driving back roads at night from Manly Airport to the Palace in Jamaica. I've enjoyed it all. Waiting roadside for my all-night bus as my plane arrived after midnight in Dalaman. Walking in the footsteps of those unbelievables, not the unforgettables, Xantos, Latunia, Patara, and Tepalos, and Olympus. CD at dawn, oh my God, Cleopatra walked here. Taking the Dalmush higher and higher, we drove up through the pine hillside. A staged life or a real life? All real. Every bit of it. I've enjoyed it to the full. Spontaneous, not impulsive. Absolutely no hidden agendas. The apartment looks good. What about this movie? That flight will be fine. That color is agreeable. It's on sale. What's not to like? Certainly not cousins, imperial leather. Bermuda looks good. Entirely natural. Last ticket to Patara before closing for the night. Warm summer evening. How remarkable. Another dawn morning in Tarsus as I walked around the old city, welcomed in to sit down and have soup. The stalls were not even open. Topkapi by afternoon, the Baghazi ferry across the city of Istanbul and an evening waterside cafe enjoying baked potatoes with my son. An evening in Venice. And who could forget that delightful birthday meal at Montepulciano in the Tuscan countryside. The mountains outside Ankara, hot air ballooning over Pamukkale. That unbelievable lake. Azure surrounded by white crushed sand and stone. The evening ferry to the Aztec ceremony outside Verarta, where I took my young son, foolish perhaps, a late ferry back to our hotel. But it was spectacular. Simply spectacular. Sargentos at sunset on Maui. I've enjoyed the road to Hana, but one could really leave it. Next time, I will stay at Travassa Resort with my son. We can most certainly leave the leptospirosis. Another dawn morning at Joshua National Park, stimulating all senses. Do you simply watch or take a photograph to remember it later? I've taken many photographs, 50,000 I would say. Palm Springs on a winter's day. Who could forget the mountain view? 
camping at Idlewild while still some snow on the ground, only to wake early for a hot breakfast in the only cafe open. Camping near General Grant in Sequoia, Kings Canyon, to awake while still chilly for 6 a.m. oatmeal, raisins and brown sugar at the park concession. OMG, Ian, you have to see this. Four planes crisscrossing over the Grand Canyon in formation, one might wonder. 5.55 p.m. over Highway 89. My iPhone camera didn't do it justice. Williams. Roadside motels. Some people love them and some people hate them. Sedona. Oh my gosh, a weekend here. An afternoon relaxing on Lake Champlain. Hmm, where is that photograph? Once upon a time, you could take a late night run around San Francisco on a Saturday night. Now it's like New York, the city that never sleeps, almost never. The late night bus from Boston to arrive at Christie Street in Lower Manhattan. Where can I get breakfast? I'm hungry. It's all ahead of you, Shannon. The people, places I've been. Yes, dear, it's life insurance I can afford. The after midnight train back from Euro Disney to our Montmartre hotel room. Sacre coeur. How many times did we do those steps? The view over Paris, worth it. Those black fleece leggings in Interlaken, Switzerland. Perfect. Just what I needed. And 681 meters to the Grindelwald. Who could have guessed? Breakfast on the train to Zurich, mm. why certainly, and lunch at Alpen Rose Cafe, receipts to file, no doubt. Oh, sod it. I shouldn't have had that cup of tea in Stansted. Now I'll miss my plane to Ireland. But the wedding was fabulous. Perfect in every way. Another dawn morning walking around Monterosa. So many peaceful moments at this hour. Owens Valley, California 395. I drove Titus Canyon. Phew, just made it out as night fell. Sweeney Ridge in the Anza Borrega Desert. Worth it, I'll say. Overnight at Butterfield Station and also the nearby State Park. I may not see Phantom Ranch on foot at the Grand Canyon, but I'll take another bare knuckle ride out of that plane out of Page, Arizona, over the canyon. Lee's Ferry at the Colorado River on a windy Saturday evening. OMG, I can't pitch a tent here. But I got the most beautiful shot of Lee's Ferry just before darkness and one of the bridge over the canyon. Amazing. Highway 12 through Shenandoah Valley and an afternoon in Turley Vineyards. Not rustic, but not parfait either. I enjoyed it. I believe these girls were in my son's high school. A bitter cold evening in New York, but we had to do it. A horse-drawn carriage through Central Park. A dress from Ross, Marshalls, Macy's, Gap and Banana Republic, spontaneous and handy shopping outing, last minute clearance items on the rack. What could be wrong with this top or that pair of slacks to a weekend track meet? Something cheerful and decent, appropriate. Shoes on file include blue molded plastic sandals purchased, CVS rack flip-flops, Rose Aviva running shoes, Brown ankle boots, Alice style, name, purchased Macy's Union Square. Puma Keds, purchased Tihon outlets. Clothes taken from my photograph album like an edition of L from the 80s. What could be wrong with that? Indeed, what's wrong with wearing those dresses to my son's high school graduation on Parker Street? The attached letter to Mr. Murray, Mira Street, Mount Davidson, 
USSR and Connolly Street all combined, details grievances, observations, and a personal statement of some 122 pages. The subsequent claims refer in more specific detail to the obvious omissions in my file at the company, Genentech, and wherein they overlap. There are no associations to my son's schooling and our pastor, Monsignor Michael Harriman at St. Cecilia in San Francisco, my father's employment in the oil and gas exploration business, or indeed my mother's green card, 1963. Wardrobe and casting include my home and aunt, life in Rockaway with her son, my grandmother, Julia, ensemble worn at my mother's wedding is for sale in a second-hand store a short walk from Andreas Platz, Basel in Switzerland. Also, my mother's hat worn on her honeymoon around Ireland. Pink bridesmaid dress and formal wear to UCC worn to my cousin's wedding. Casual dress worn to a Houlihan's birthday dinner 1985. Cinnamon dress worn by Evelyn to my wedding. My outfit worn as a kit by my house, May 27, 2020, 12.26 p.m. Julie's photograph in Olive Juice, Children's Dress Clothes Magazine. Barbarossa, Barstow, California, Santa Barbara, Barber of Seville, Gugombara. The Bar Bridge, Bowers Bakery, St. Louis, Bar Barberin, indeed the Bar Stool in Kitty's Local. A trip to the zoo, McDonald's Farm, indeed Animal Farm, or is it McDonald's Nagel Street in the Outer Mission, San Francisco? Hybrids of all kinds. How does one endure such an assault on the senses? One assumes this particular assault rifle was purchased in Santa Barbara. Ambassadors here, ambassadors there, much like the store on West Portal Avenue. Late night, consular drives through my neighborhood and home. Several to file. I had to walk the dog. Early morning, consular rendezvous to file. 8.13 a.m. proceed, to be exact, at the, you guessed it, 1.95. Kaufmans, Weinkoffs, and astronauts, you don't say people we never laid eyes on, not to mention even hearing about them in passing. There is no noblesse oblige. We cross paths casually in a school, church or workplace setting. Indeed, the only associations are on paper as required for legal documents and copies therein. From the city, Gwen and her well-dressed family attended St. Mary's Rochestown while staying at their seaside cottage near our home on weekends. How does one redress any and all many impersonations? A christening in St. Erasmus or a birth certificate in Whitegate? Cork Bag at the mouth of Cork Harbor where I grew up? One assumes any phony will shuffle sideways in a line dance. This documentary, Research and Discovery, is intended to obliterate any doubt that we could be in a position to defend our obligations to local, state and national entities as blatantly represented us in such a phony dialogue. Grandmothers and aunts who are no longer alive, mother who is almost 80 years old, children, nieces, and nephews. 